Welcome to the City Church of Dallas web broadcast. God is doing something so awesome. We just finished the service. There's still a, a lingering of the presence of God. It's just special what God is doing. One man today received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One of our young men, one of our ushers. Open up your heart. Open up your mind. There is a tangible presence of God in this room. God's going to touch you as you watch this broadcast. Thousands of people in countries all around the world on every continent are watching. So get ready for God to move into your life and welcome to City Church of Dallas. Amen. Well, it's good to be here again. I'll tell you, God is so faithful. Look at this stuff down here. There we go. Why didn't God make three or, or three or four arms for us? You know that? It's like, hold on. There you go. Hallelujah. What's a blessing to be at City Church, is it not? And uh, I'll tell you, this is an amazing uh, powerhouse. I mean, you know, just it's like you just go from glory to glory, right? When you think it's good, it gets better. And when it gets better, it gets the best. And before long, you're like, I have no other words to explain it. I mean, it just keeps on and on. But you get to that place of like unspeakable joy and full of glory where it's just unspeakable. You can't really talk about how good it is. You know, it's just, it's beyond good. You know, I always tell people when people say, God is good. I said, no, he's really not. And they're like, what? I said, he's, he's beyond that. So there's not a word in our vocabulary to define the greatness of God. I don't even want to box him in with the word good. Are you with me? So, uh, so tonight we're going to have a good time. And it's interesting because I want the brother on the, on the camera to, I want you to remember what he said because it's actually part of my teaching. You're going to find a snippet of it and part of this woman of God. So I think you guys were in the spirit hearing some things that God was speaking to me earlier. And by the way, Pastor Jefferson, he's not a, just a bundle of joy. I mean, he, he's like this, he's just mighty man of God, but he's like this child that just loves to be in daddy's presence and just have fun, amen? And that's how we should all be. And so it is an honor. He's such a, a great man of God and a good friend. And so you guys that go here regularly, you're getting meat. You're not getting some bread and some milk, which is some elementary teaching. I mean, you're getting some good, rich word, amen? Amen. So I hope and pray that all of you guys are good soil. I believe you are, that those seeds are just, just getting in your spirit and you're growing and you're learning. You know, I praise God for the Holy Ghost goosebump, but if the Holy Ghost goosebump is not causing me to grow and be effective and be more than a conqueror, then I've done no good. Amen? And I believe all of you guys are getting this rich word. There's a little bit of feedback up here. Uh, getting a rich word of seed. Okay, cool. Amen. So, uh, and, and, and Marvin, my dear friend, look, are you always with that camera? I'll tell you. If I can ever get that camera out of your hand, I'll tell you. This is for Sandy to tell you you're here. To good. Pastor Sandy, she's our friend in California. I, we've known Marvin for years and just such a mighty voice, is he not? I mean, anywhere he goes, you just want to give him the microphone because it's just so powerful and you get that overflow of God. Amen. So, um, tonight I want to share with you a couple of things. Uh, let me, first of all, tell you about myself. Many of you don't know. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and we have a ministry called IdentityNetwork.com or .net. And what we are is we're a more of a prophetic resource website center. Um, God called me when I was about five or six to be a prophet. I had no clue what that meant. I didn't know what that term, terminology meant. I mean, I was a good Baptist boy, just loving God. I didn't know, and I was hearing God's voice, and I thought, what on earth am I hearing? I know I'm not crazy, you know. And, uh, but I, I knew at a young age that my Heavenly Father was speaking to me. And the situation with many of us is if you're like me, when you're hungry and you're thirsting after righteousness or something from God, you're going to get it. Amen? And so I knew all my life I could hear from the voice of God. And so that's part of the gifting as a prophet to be able to hear from the Lord, not just for myself, but for other people, for nations, for churches. I mean, I've had the privilege to prophesy to President Perez of Israel, the Prime Minister Benjamin, Destiny's Child, Michelle Williams is a close friend of mine. I prophesied her to going back to doing a tour with Destiny's Child when they went back one time. We prophesied to producers in Hollywood. We do so many people. Yeah. Are they, are they Yeah. There's so much, I mean so much, you know, that God has, you know, has this right in, in, the, in the vein of. Because you know why? People want to hear the voice of God. Don't we, we all, he says, I, he's, you know, the voice of a good shepherd is what God wants us to tune into. And all of us have the privilege and the right to hear the voice of God. Amen? Amen. So we have IdentityNetwork.net that's just, we have prophetic resources, we have hundreds of CDs, books, and uh, just so many different uh, um, pieces of product and material that will bless your socks off. Amen? On our website. Um, I also have several books out, which I think my fourth book actually is coming out 
here next month, but I wanted to just touch on a couple of things. Um, my favorite book, this is my baby, The Power of the Eternal Now, because of the fact it's, I have this one and I have um, Releasing the Power of the Prophetic. For those of you who feel you hear the voice of God, but you don't know how to define it, we'll teach you and show you, you know, the do's and the don'ts and, and how to tune into the the Spirit of God. But The Power of the Eternal Now is my favorite book because it basically teaches people to realign themselves in the now. You know, get out of the past, get out of the future, live in the now. God's name is I am, not I will become. And many of us serve the God of I will become or I will get. And he says, he says, with the, he, this is what one thing the scripture says. He says, let the weak say, I am strong, not I'm going to become strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. So what you do is you line yourself up in the, in the I am-ness of God. And so you proclaim His name I am, and you say I am rich. So you're putting yourself into the name of God, into the, into the now, and your confession is exactly what God calls you anyway to be. Hallelujah. So anyway, so this book is full of good revelatory things. Because I believe all of us, all, hum, all humans struggle with that, with that, with that problem of of how to fine-tune and live in the now. That's the only place where faith lives. Amen? A couple of more pieces. Uh, and and I, I wanted to touch on this for a moment because awakening to the seer anointing is, uh, I have me and, and I don't know if you know Dr. David Ireland and Dennis Kramer. We did a CD set uh, series because a lot of people, they, they, they hear the voice of God, but they like, I'm not a, really a prophet and I don't really prophesy like you or so and so, but I'm hearing God's voice. And so we talk about the difference between really the ministry of the seer and the ministry of the prophet. And, what, and, and to, to sum it all down as a seer, a seer means that some things are saying, some things to pray. In other words, some things you see and some things you pray about and some things you'll see in picture form or what I call visual form. I think we use in the internet world the graphic form. And so it teaches you how to tap into the Lord and see and hear from the things of the Spirit. Amen? Yes. If you're called to that realm. Um, and, I, and I shared this uh, the other night, but we have a music company as well. And uh, we have several of them, but I wanted to touch on well, we'll talk about two at the same time. I, I'm just pumped up for this sermon. I, I really am. And we have a lot of instrumentals and those who are worship, um, worship as well for those who like vocals. But my favorite is Fountains of Healing. When we did this, when it's an instrumental and it's very spontaneous, we did this because it, we were in the moment... You got to be in the moment, in the now, in the studio when you do anything. Never, never find yourself, you know, um, rehearsing something and try to memorize what you've learned from yesterday and bring it to the power of now. It doesn't work. Holy Spirit's a now, now spirit. So He wants to breathe over your nowness to say, here's a freshness. And so we got in there and all of a sudden God began to, to speak to us and the musicians, which I'm not a musician, but the musicians were just, I mean, getting caught up in the Spirit of God. And so we re He released a healing anointing upon it. And so we have a lot of people who testify, I've been healed by hearing this CD and playing it at any given time in their lives. And the other one is Liquid Love, which is a, a good friend of mine, David Baroni, did um, some worship CDs for us. And this one is amazing because it's all worship songs of love, love, and love. I love what Pastor Jeff said. Love is the key to everything. God never said He had love. See, if you have love, that means you can lose it or sit it down. If you become that, and if you are love, guess what? You are that thing. You can never separate yourself from yourself. Amen? Amen? So we have a lot of worship songs. For those of you who struggle, does God love me for who I am and what I am? Oh, this will help you out. <laughs> Amen. Well, tonight I want to share something with you um, that's really empowering because a lot of people don't know the power of wealth and riches. And a lot of times we say, oh, there's another prosperity message again. No, actually you don't know the terminology of wealth. Wealth goes beyond greenery goes beyond coins and greenery. And tonight I want to teach you the power of what wealth really is. So can we, can we, can we stand and pray yes. for a moment? I want to just release an anointing tonight because I believe it is your season and it's your time to prosper. Now you might have heard that before, but here, let me tell you the difference. It's not just about releasing something that says God wants to prosper you, oh I receive it, and I go on with my everyday normal living. That's not how it works and you'll never receive 
that way. It means when God and gives you an import, uh, impregnates you or gives you an importation, when a woman gets pregnant, her entire body begins to change. The way she ta- the way she eats pickles and ice cream, whatever you want to call it, they eat crazy things. Their emotions go crazy. Their chemicals go crazy. You want to stay away from because you think they're devil incarnate sometimes. You know what I mean? And then sometimes they're angelic, and sometimes they want to sleep when they're supposed to be awake, and and so their body goes through changes, and they have to give in to the change to feed their baby. Do you hear what I'm saying? They have to give in to it because they know their body is, the nutrients is giving to the baby. So what I'm saying is this, when we begin to give an uh, impartation and you receive the revelation that God wants me wealthy and what that really means, it means that when you receive it, that means you have to act upon it and you have to change your stinking thinking and know the principles and the ideas and the, and, and the, uh, the strategies of God and set yourself up and begin to do it. Not just say, God's going to bless me because I'm just going to stand here and I'm his favorite. He'll say, no, that's not how my word works. I honor my word above my name. The way I work is by my word. Amen. Amen. So he tells the strategies how to get the wealth. Amen. Amen. So let's lift, lift, our, lift our hands. Father, right now, I just release in the atmosphere, Lord, that wealth anointing. The mindset to begin to take on the mind and the form of Christ. Lord, and I thank you tonight that we are beginning to understand kingdom principles, Father. To understand who we are, what we need, and what, we're, what we possess, God, and, and what you've called us to be. Everybody has the vocation not a job. That's our main goal. Everybody is an entrepreneur and many of us in our spirit we think entrepreneurism means I own my own business. Entrepreneurism is more spiritual. It means you call something that does not exist in the natural as though it were because everyone has a creative business level mentality in you and tonight Lord we release that entrepreneurship anointing to be creative in every area of our lives with our family, our business, our ministry, the church, our friends, our family, everything about us, and to ourselves, Father. So, Lord, I thank you tonight that we're moving into the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. So we receive right now the engrafted word of truth that separates, Lord, that sword of the word separates the soul from the spirit of how I see myself to how you see me, God. So tonight, Lord, let your word come like a sword that cuts asunder between soul and spirit. I thank you tonight, God, that we're awakening to who we are in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You can take your seat. You know, uh, there's an old, old, old saying, and it's actually not a Christian saying, but it's very powerful. I believe, I believe Paul grabbed a hold of it, even though it was, it was after him. But I believe, you know, in the Spirit, there's no future, past, or present. I mean, excuse me, there's no past, present, or future. It's all just now. And so there's an old saying that I say in all my teachings, and it's, and it's this. It's, we are, we are, um, excuse me, we are not humans having a spiritual experience. We are spirits having a human experience. And when you begin to grab the concept of that, you begin to realize everything here is new to me. And my job from where I am or where I'm from is to make kingdom uh, reality for me here on earth. But religion teaches us, I'm going to try to reach God, find Him. If I, if I do this, if I do that, I'll, I'll get His attention and wake Him up and He'll bless me. That's not, that's not kingdom. That's religion. I've got to find you, God. Are you in a good mood? Do you love me? Oh, I, I don't, oh, now do you see me, God? He says, wait a minute. You've got to realize, as a son of God, a son of God is like a fish in the ocean trying to find the ocean. You're already in Him. Right. You're, you're in it. And so I have to align myself to realize that wherever my foot shall trot, God's given it to me. That I'm a walking Christ on earth. I'm a walking kingdom. And everywhere I go, God just manifests Himself in my footsteps. And everything I touch, it's the Father's hand touching it and bringing it back to life. So we have to change our thinking thinking to think like the Father. Amen? Amen. I'm so thrilled about tonight. I, I, I just really am. I'm like a kid. You know, whenever God gives you revelation, you just get like a kid. You're like, yes, God, thank you, God. So I want to talk about the power of wealth, okay? Now, back in the, if many of you are, have been a Christian for a long time, back in the Word of Faith days and the Pentecostal days, and many of you that have not been church back then, you've heard of this terminology, we heard of the prosperity gospel. And I thought, and even just now, it makes you cringe when you hear that because you think, oh my God. Everything back then, there's, old, there's an old saying that whenever truth comes into the earth, it's like a pendulum swing on a clock. It goes to the extreme over here, the extreme over here, until there's a balance that some people will have wisdom, will take it up and learn how to balance it. So back then, everything was about materialism. And if you had the finest and the nicest, you must have been God's best. Yeah, right. 
But see, that's not that's wrong thinking. That's right. So I want to tell you a little bit about what wealth is tonight. Amen. Now, the Bible says, and I encourage you tonight, please. I'm doing more teaching than preaching. I want to encourage you to please take notes tonight if you can. All right? That's why God created iPhones and iPads and eyes and eyes and eyes. Amen? But one of the things the Scripture says is, you've heard it before, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Right. Which means you have to do kingdom cor correct kingdom protocol. Which means that if you seek things, all you will get are things. If you seek the kingdom first, then all these and this righteousness, then all these things will be added to you. What does that mean to us? It means that if I seek things and I buy something without going to the kingdom and having an ear to hear and an eye to see to know it's what God has for me in that wealth process, then that means if I don't do that and I purchase something, how many know when you purchase something, you have to take it back to the manufacturer when it goes crazy? And so if I go to the kingdom, that means if I purchase something or get something from the kingdom of what God has for me in the will of my life, that means that I take it back to the manufacturer and his responsibility is to give me something better or something new. So it becomes his problem, no longer mine. But when I purchase something, I get something and we say to ourselves, why did it, God, I felt like this was you. I, 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 just, I got it. God's like, no, you got it before you asked me because it's what you wanted and not what I wanted for you. And so we go to the manufacturer and we can't understand why it's not getting fixed and we're going through a hard time because God says you didn't go through kingdom correct protocol. When you go to the kingdom, God adds everything in your life you need. Amen? We got it? So what is the difference between wealth and riches? Let's go there for a moment. Okay. Riches is this. Write this down if you can. Silver and gold are riches. And if you think about it, any one of us, some of us laugh about this, but it's true, every one of us can have riches. It's not that hard to get, to get money. It's really not. Some of you are like, I don't know what world you're living in, but for me it might be. But it's really not. Think about it. It's really not hard to get, to get riches. But riches is this. Riches are things. Wealth is a state of being. Okay. Okay. Here's what that means. That means that if I'm wealthy, that means I have the riches not just here, but I have the riches here. Did you know, here's when this brother come into play with his testimony. Do you know what the word wealth is likened to? It's likened to the word peace. Did you know that? No. Nothing missing, nothing broken. That's right. Which means when I'm wealthy, like he said, all of a sudden a peace came on him. Did you, I don't know if y'all caught that. You probably didn't because you didn't know the sermon yet. But I did because, see, when you, when you know you're wealthy, then you realize, I am whole here, and I am whole here. Right. See, it's so easy for the body of Christ to say, oh, those heathens out there, they got tons of money, but they're poor inside. Praise the Lord. And, you know, and, I, and I'm rich inside. Can I tell you something what the Bible says? I love this. It says, I wish of all things you'd prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. What does that mean? It means that for the religious folk who says, they got a lot of money, but on the inside, they're just broke. But praise God, I got the riches of Christ in me, but I can't pay my power bill. Hear me out for a moment. The Bible says a false balance is an abomination before the right. Lord. Which means you can praise the Lord that you're prospering here, but if I'm not prospering here, I'm not wealthy, and that's a false balance. So I'm no different than the heathen out here who's got a lot of money, but is poor on the inside. Hello. Which means God says, I'm causing every fiber of your being to be prosperous. Let me give you an example. You remember when the disciples were walking and all of a sudden they came across this man that was asking for some money? And they said, silver and gold have I not, but, uh, but such as I have I give to you. It wasn't the fact they're going, I don't have any money at all. I, you know, I, have, I don't have a penny to, to my name. He didn't mean that. Everybody knew the disciples had money. They wouldn't, I mean, they, they had an abundance. They walked with the master. Come on. It means you don't need riches. You need wealth that is an inner thing. Come on. Which means, see, I can give you riches if you want me to, but if I give you riches, what happens is you'll come back as it doesn't satisfy the problem. Right. But if I give you wealth from within, which is wholeness, that yes. causes you to never thirst again, then right. it takes care right. of the problem and you have the solution. Mm -hmm. And you won't be sitting here begging. You're begging because you're, come on, because you've got problems. You need healing. Are you with me? Yeah. So see, we've been false balances. Yeah. 
We have to focus. We said, I don't want to focus on this because God doesn't care about this. God cares about, oh, Honda Shonda. And we, we, we say, but our power bills need to be paid. And we ask God, pay our power bill, God. But, but I got the Holy Ghost. And you know what God says? God says, let me ask you a question. Does glory pay your bills? No. But glory gives you access, if you think about it, to the presence of God. Right. Does money get you to heaven? No. But it gets you access here. Which means that money, the Bible says, money answers all things. If you need an answer for anything in life, you've got to have money. This church would not be if it hadn't been for money. Glory didn't pay for this building. Glory didn't pay for this. Glory didn't pay for these seats. You know what paid for the seats and the stuff? Money that answers all things. And it came from those who were wealthy, wealthy, not lacking in anything because they knew, look, he doesn't need healing. He needs natural substance to pay for these things where they can sit on. Are you with me? And see, a lot of problems, if you think about it, people out there who are, who are rich, what happens when they lose their money? We hear people all the time who are multimillionaires, they kill themselves when they lose their money. They get depressed. Their wife leaves them. They get, everything goes haywire. You know why? Because they're rich. They're not wealthy. When you're wealthy, then you know what? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. If God comes in my life to take every, all my money away, I can say, not a problem. I've got an inner wealth and this on the outside, it's going to replenish. It's going to take care of itself because I'm wealthy, which means I know how to always produce and magnify and make what I have and through investments make it grow and bigger. Are you with me? Yeah. And so we have to understand the principles of, of true wealth. Now then, let me explain a little bit more when he deals with wealth. The Bible talks about a man named Joseph of Arimathea. I shared a little bit this morning with, with a friend of mine. Joseph of Arimathea, and, and this is the neatest thing. The Bible says he was considered a rich man. Now, my question is this. Why didn't he ever... Why does God in the Bible always say, so-and-so, a rich man? The well-to-do woman. Why would you... What do you care to say, so-and-so is rich, God? Obviously, it speaks something to God when he says something about Joseph Armatheus, a rich man. And he deals with people in the Bible and go behind it, he talks about the riches they have. It speaks something to me, does it not? Think about it. From, why would he say that? Because it's for a purpose. Because he knows he can use that person if they're a willing vessel to take what they have and propagate and, or excuse me, expand the kingdom of God. And all he's asking for is saying, hey, hey, Joseph or Armatheus, are you wealthy or are you rich? If you're wealthy, I can use you beyond measure. If you're rich, then you know what? If I try to take money from you, you'll go haywire because you'll think, you'll feel like it's a divorce because you did something illegal and that was you, you were a lover of your money and not a friend of your money. And see, a lot of times when God takes our money, like we talked about earlier, tithes and, and offerings, uh, you know, the Lord's requiring this from you. And, and all of a sudden we say, oh God, no, it's like a divorce. You know why? Because you did something that was wrong. You married your money, became a lover of it, which God says not to be a lover of it. But God never said not to befriend it because you should befriend mammon, which means if I'm a friend of Pastor Jeff's, as a friend, I'm going to welcome you. I want to talk good about you. I want to welcome you to my home. I want you part of my life. But if I sit here and I say, Man, your ministry is just horrid. And your voice, oh, I mean, come on. Do you think he's going to stay around me pretty much enough? Oh, he's going to leave me. And you know what we do to money? We say, you're evil. You're no good. I don't want you. We, we treat it because of our perception. We treat it evil and wrong and bad. You know what it says? It says, I can't befriend you. I don't, want to, I don't want this kind of abuse when I have someone over here that can put me into proper perspective by being my friend. When you make money your idol or make it your lord of your life, you put it in the wrong place and it can't function properly. The problem with people is they allow to, themselves to make money an idol. And when you make money an idol or make it lord over you, it says to, to itself and says to you, you don't realize I was never created to be lord over you. I'm created for you to be lord over me. And when you put it over you to be Lord over your life, you're going to mess your life up and mess it up because its purpose is to invest and to circulate and to flow and its economy just keeps on going. And so when you befriend it and put it itself to where it is your servant, not your master, then God says, you're the man I want to use. You're the man I want to use. You're the woman I want to use because you know how to put it where it needs to be. That's kingdom principles. Amen? So Joseph of Arimathea, why, did he call, why was he called a rich man? You'll like this. You know why I feel like he was a call to be a rich man? Because he knew, and if, if everybody knows the story of Joseph of Arimathea, he was the one that after Christ died, he took the body of Christ and wrapped it in fine fresh linen and prepared it. Now God began to speak to me the other day and gave me a revelation on this, on this a while back. And that was, 
I believe the reason why God made a point to point him out. I believe uh, God wanted to make him rich because he knew how to take the body of Christ and prepare it, hear me out for a moment, and, and, and wrap it with fine fresh linen or the finest thing that they had to offer back then. Which means, when Pastor Jeff or when each one of you take the body of Christ and, and you take someone who has broken dreams and feels like their life is over and they're dead in spirit and nothing in life works, you know how to prophetically take the body of Christ and prepare them and wrap them up in the finer things of life with integrity and excellence because you know joy is going to come in the morning for them and you know that you're taking their life because they're about to be resurrected. Then you understand the principles. And you know what God says? God says, I like that. You know why? Because the Bible talks about taking care of that which belongs to another man. Which means if I come into the house of God and I know how to treat Pastor Jeff's things or I come to your house and you know I come to your house and I treat the things you all you have as if it were my own with integrity and with value because I see the Christ in you and I treat the Christ in you as if he is Lord and King which he is then God honors that but if I say oh yeah it's you know it's Deanne again yeah and it's Angie and you know yeah well she, they want me to watch check this out they want me to housekeep this week you'll like this they want, me to ha they want me to watch over their home this week while they go on vacation. So, okay, whatever. <laughs> Her mom's like, please. So all of a sudden they say, uh, you know, can you watch over our house? Yeah. So I go there, hear me out, and I mess up everything. Don't treat it really good because it's not mine. Why should I worry about it? Why should I care? So I treat it bad. So you guys come home and it's like a hurricane took place in the house. Do you think God's going to honor that with me? Because what a man sows, he reaps. Which means, when I, when I don't treat the, value, the valuable things of yours, I turn around because I'm sowing into your life, not just a, a, a lack of integrity, but I'm sowing like a slothfulness. I'm, sl I'm, I'm not really sowing what I should. So God will see to it that when my time comes, and I maybe I drop my billfold or my watch on the ground and I lose it, that somebody will take advantage of it and won't return it back to me. Because my things will not be treated the way... I treated someone else's things. You reap what you sow. So if you're on the worship team, if you're part of a ministry, part of a church, I got a great idea. If you're part of a family with parents, you know what the best thing to do is? Treat everything in your life with integrity. How would you want to be treated? Because it comes back upon you. You know, one thing I do when I go everywhere in my life, I treat whatever it is around me. If it's not mine, I treat it with value and respect and honor. Because I want my things one day in my time of famine, I want my, my situation to be treated by somebody else. God will say, hey, you know what? I remember what you sowed into this brother's life. I'm going to send somebody that will honor you with your things and your own life when you're down and out. Amen? You get the picture? Yeah. How important is it that we treat one another, the body of Christ, with integrity? Very important. But I don't know you, so I don't, I don't really care. Is that how we are in the body of Christ most of the time? Or do I say, the same Christ in you is the same Christ in me. The same Spirit of God in you is the same Spirit of God in me. Which means, if I treat you with respect and, and integrity and honor, this is what the Bible says. If you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. I'll take it a step further. You've not only done it to me, but you've also done it back to yourself. Because we're a family. If I treat you ugly, I treat myself ugly. If I put you down, I, try, I put myself down. Not just him, but I put myself down. So how does functional after a while do we become? Amen? You'll love this one. This is my favorite. The Bible talks about 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And we always use it. The old, I think the old Pentecostals use it. Or the Baptists. Like, the Lord will not put upon you more than you can handle. Praise the Lord. And I'm like, do you know what that scripture really means? Obviously not. But here's what it really says. It says, actually, He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can handle. But let's, let's put it this way. What does that mean to us? It means that if your mind is not prospering to the level it should to handle the things of the kingdom, that means God will not entrust you with finer things of life because of the fact God's not going to give you $1,000 if your mind isn't prosperous at that level to know how to handle it. So guess what? God won't entrust you with $5 million because He knows you can't handle it. So He won't put more upon you than you can bear. And we wonder why we don't have the finer things in the spirit, in the spirit and in the natural. 
Because God says, renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind. Get the mind of Christ. Why? Because it speaks of such quality and integrity. It speaks of something unlimited. So therefore, I come to the realization that when I move in that mind of Christ, and I train my mind to understand value and integrity in anything and everything that God's brought to my life and in your life as my brothers and sisters, that means God says, you took care of their home, so I'm going to bless you with something because I know you can bear it or you can handle it. Because if you don't know how to handle $1,000 and you, pardon the expression, but you freak out, oh my God, I've never had $1,000. Let me give you a great example. How many know, y'all going to laugh at me, how many know, you always see these people on TV, do you not? Win the lottery, and, and pardon the expression, so please forgive me. But they sometimes might have maybe one tooth in their head, and they don't have any... I'm sorry, Pastor Jeff, God forgive me. And they might not have a common lick of common sense, and they won the $5 million, and do, is it not true? I'm so sorry, Pastor like, oh, Jesus. Sorry for those listening, okay, out there. It's his fault. So anyway, so we look at that, but is it not true that when they win the money, that literally... With, many of you are probably going, do I have more than one tooth? <laughs> But do you know that within three weeks or a month or even a year, $5 million, gone. Yeah, you're so right. Do you know why? Because their mind never prospered to know how to handle it. So God won't put upon you more than you can handle. Hello? So how much is it important that we prosper in the Spirit? That if I prosper in the Spirit of the fine things of the kingdom, He says, yeah, you're ready. You're ready for that pay raise. You're ready for more income. You're ready for that vocation, that new vocation in your job because I know you can handle it now because you handled my job. You handled my economy. You handled... In fact, you know what? I believe, I believe this is good. I believe God sends the Holy Spirit to see how we handle Him and see how we treat Him. Do we sloppy agape everywhere and treat the Spirit with no respect because guess what's going to come back upon you? Or do we treat it and say, let me just say, anything and everything that comes from my Father, I'm going to treat it with honor, value, respect, integrity. Hello. Because I know God, God says, as long as this earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. As long as we're on planet earth, everything in your life, constant, do you know right now, every one of you right now are sowing and reaping. 24-7 you're sowing and reaping. You might be sowing a thought. You might be sowing an idea. You might be sowing, listening. You, every, every moment of the day, you're sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. Hello. It's important to pay attention. Let me give you an idea. I love this. People always say, well, you know, the Bible says he'll give seed to the sower. But, you know, I don't really have anything to sow, brother. I, I, I'm at this place. I don't really have a job. I love what you said earlier. I don't have a job. I don't have anything to really give the kingdom of God right now. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. I love what the man of God said, but let me take it a little step further. You actually do have something to sow. If you don't have seed to sow, sow yourself. If you don't have anything to invest, invest yourself. Invest yourself or sell yourself by what? Your time, your energy, right. your, your... Hello. Right. Your life. Right. God, I don't, have any, I don't have any seeds. Now, you'll like this too. God only gives seed to the sower. So guess what? That means not everybody gets seed. Only those, that sow. Only those that are called a sower. Hello. So you've got to, you, you got to have the identity and, and, the, um, and the reconstruction that God validates your cause. He says, you I call a sower. And a lot of people say, well, I don't have seed to sow. I said, once you go through the principles and you begin to understand, okay, then I'm going to start from what I do have to give. And there's a need. Let me tell you this. As Pastor Jeff, I'm telling you right now, I was an assistant pastor for 15 years. There is always a need in a church. Oh, yeah. Always a need to fulfill the vision of the house that God gives the pastor. You know how you do it? If you don't have money to give, you sow into the vision of the house. Why? Why would I do that, God? So your vision will be fulfilled. You want money? Give money away. You, want, you, you need some more time? I love this. I have no time to come to church, pastor. I have no time to do anything. Sow time into somebody else that has no time. That's good. God will give you time. That's right. I want to be successful. I want to be an amazing actor, Marvin Matthews. I want to be an amazing actor. You know what you do? Then sow into someone else who is trying to be an, ex, an ex, ex, you know, uh, expiring, thank you, actor. I want, to, I want to prophesy. So, I'm not talking about just money. So your life into the prophets of God. I want to be a pastor. I want to be a good worshiper. Here, here let, me, let me say it. I was in the hotel room today and God really began to show me some, some things that were very strategic. And that is, 
If many of you feel you're called to be a pastor of a church or this or that in ministry, can I tell you what you do? You, don't, you, don't, you just don't get before the Lord and say, God, I'm going to do it in your timing and just go up and leave. Here's what you do. In order to be a pastor, I need to sow into the minister or the mentor or the, or the man of God God's placed over me as a canopy, and I'm sowing my own future to be an amazing pastor. And until God decides to release me, guess what I'm continuing to do? So, so, so. I'm going to sow my time. I'm going to sow love. I'm going to sow my energy. I'm going to sow, Pastor, can I, can I do this? Can I do that? What can I do for you? You know, that makes a man of God. A great leader is made from great servants. Always write that down. A great leader is made from a great servant. If you want to be a great leader, be a great servant. The more you serve, the more you will lead. It's a known fact. If you're trying to be a leader and you haven't paid your dues to serve, when you become a leader, you will ruin everybody's life and ruin yours as well because you prematured something. I told you I wouldn't just talk about money. So you premature something, and guess what happens? God says, but I can't cause you to sow where you haven't reaped. I mean, I can't cause you to reap where you haven't sowed. You want to be a pastor? Let me, let me look back and see where you sowed your life into pastoral people. But Lord, you called me to be a pastor. Oh, hold on a minute. Let me see. I did tell you that, but... I didn't see the corresponding action behind the faith. That's good. Amen? Yes, that's good. To he who has shall be given more. To he who has shall be given more. And he, who, are you hearing me? To he who has shall be given more. I used to think, that's pretty mean, God. You're going to give to those who have, and it says, and those who do not, he'll take away from. I said, I used to think, I love you, God, but please don't strike me down. But that's pretty mean. I'm just waiting, you know, God to hit me. And he said, you don't understand the Scripture. You don't understand the principle of it. This is what this means. And I love this. God will not give wealth to the poor. In other words, just because you're a friend of God, God is not going to give you wealth just because you said you're needy or you're poor. That's what the Scripture talks about. There's principles in the Scripture to know how to gain wealth spiritually and naturally. He doesn't just say, poor baby, you can't pay your bill. Let me just give you some wealth. If it was that easy, we, none of us would have a problem. But he says, I honor my word above my name. If you want the wealth, spiritually and naturally, get in my word and do what you need to do. And then that wealth will be there for you because it's part of my covenant for you. Are you with me? Put it another way. You want your cup to run over in ministry? You want the cup to run over with your anointing? Here's what you do. That means if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, uh, if your substance in the cup is halfway full or halfway empty, however you want to look at it or examine it through your perception, you take what you have there and sow it. You want an overflowing life? God would ask you, what do you have and what are you doing with what you have currently in the cup? I will never cause an overflow until I look at what you have now and see how you're treating it. Yes. Hello. I want an anointing for singing, God. I know that voice is there. Then let me ask you a question. What are you doing with what you have currently? Because I'm a God that adds two, but you have to have a corresponding action to, to show me what you're doing with what you currently have. I can't give because I'll make just not a whole lot of money a week. Do you think God's going to say, my poor baby. I, le, le, you know, I'm just in a great mood today. Praise myself. I'm just going to bless you with a thousand dollars. He doesn't, does he? He says, let me see what you're doing with what you have. I'm going to take a sidetrack for a moment. I'll tell you something the Lord showed me a long time ago. How many know when you go in the richest parts of the town? Is it not true? Like if you go in subdivisions that are really, really rich... It's always kept great. Right. Grass is cut. There's no old cars and old beat up and trash bags have been there for weeks. On, But if you go in a really poor side of town, you're going to see old abandoned cars in the yard. You're going to see grass pull, you know, all the way up here to where weeds. And, and, and you're going to get all this stuff and, and trash and kids' toys that have been there. And the kids are already 50 years old now and they've been there since they were three. <laughs> Do you know why? Do you know why? I'll tell you why. This is the truth. Because God looks at you and He says, do you, how do you view yourself? Do you view yourself as a child of the King or do you view yourself as how you see yourself now? In other words, do you call the things that be not as though they were? Are you treating what you have with royalty? Or are you saying, any day now God's going to give me a new home? And God says, well, let me look at what you're doing with the present current home. Okay, so I see there's no pain, there's, there's holes in the floor. I, I understand you might have money for that, but... Have you ever thought about maybe covering up with a rug to where it, it fits a master or a, or a child of the king? Have you ever thought about just simple things like removing the junk and the garbage out of your yard? Why? Because a king lives there. A king lives there. 
My question is, how are you treating the king within the king in you? Because he's king yes. of kings and lord of lords. He calls you a king and a lord. How are you treating what you have now? And so the whole time you're believing God by faith for something new, you know, God says, what are you doing with what you currently have? Because that's what I look at in order to prosper you. If you're treating it like junk, then guess what you're going to produce? You're going to produce more junk. You know what I tell people? If you live in the worst house, the worst state of being ever in a, in a town, you make sure that house looks like it's fit for royalty because you are royalty. And how you treat your things is how you will treat yourself and see yourself. If I come to your house and I see that it's all junked up, messed up, that shows me how you treat yourself. Hello. So it doesn't matter if you're not filthy rich. What matters is if you're wealthy, you'll take care of everything you have. And you'll treat it as if you're royalty. Because you are royalty. Amen? A couple more points. I could go on and on, but I want to give you a couple more points tonight that will really jumpstart you. Uh, a man that doesn't work doesn't eat, the Bible says. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. That means, and here's the thing that we get. I, I want to talk just a couple, a couple more points. That means this. A man that doesn't work doesn't eat. That means he didn't say if you work, you're going to get wealthy. The bare minimum of what you're doing when you work is that you, that you will eat. Did it not say that? So you work, you eat. That is man's principles. That's a man idea that God gives us in the universe to say, if you work, I'll guarantee you to, to eat, that you'll eat. So then how do we access the riches of heaven in the spirit and in the natural? Well, first of all, you have two keys. Like we talked about earlier, to bind and loose. God's given you two keys in the spirit and in the natural. Which means you should be prosperous because you have the keys in both arenas of your life. Both areas you should be prosperous in. And not lacking in either one of them. So here's what we do. We understand the principle, according to Adam, that under the curse, he had to toil and sweat by the brow. That's when you work to eat. But the Bible goes on to say something in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. And it says, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find knowledge of witty inventions. What does that mean? God's going to be David Copperfield and just bam, there you are. Mm -mm. He's not David Copperfield. He's not in a magic. He's into his word. Which means this. I wisdom, I love this, dwell with prudence. Prudence means provident care in the management of resources and economy. So I wisdom dwell with the management of how you're treating your resources. It says, and find wisdom of witty inventions. Are you with me? Wisdom wants to help you, but you've got to have wisdom as well by, by managing the resources in your, and the economy in which you're currently moving in. Because God wants to give you witty inventions, does He not? Now, do you see tonight where I'm coming from when I say that God wants to make you wealthy? Do I mean just money? I mean everything in your entire life to where when you truly lay hands on somebody, they're not healed, they're whole. That when you begin to find yourself walking, you don't think that you don't see that some things are prospering. You see everything is prospering. Your entire atmosphere and environment begins to prosper because you know who you are and what you are in the kingdom kingdom of God. That's what wealth means. Amen. So who is your enemy? Let me tell you this. Who is your enemy? The Bible says in Proverbs chapter ten verse fifteen, the rich man's wealth in, is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is of their poverty. Poverty is a destructive spirit against you. That's your enemy. So, here's my question. We get all excited, do we not, and say, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Ooh, man, in a Pentecostal charismatic church, that gets us excited, does it not? Man, we get excited. But do we know what the Scripture really means? The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. It means it's laid up. It didn't say it was loosed. It says it's laid up for you. So why do we get excited about that? Because he says, here's a wealth laid up on, your, on, on, the, on the shelf of heaven for you. In the spirit and the natural. Now, I, now you need the strategies and the plans to know how to loose what's been laid up. So is, is God David Copperfield? No, I'll tell you who God is. He's a God that says, I desire to prosper you, man, more than you can ever ask or think. I want to give you the, the Zoe kind of life more than you can ever imagine. And here's my principles to do it and know how to do it. And what do we do? We sit back and say, God, I'm just going to wait on you. And God says, come on, stir the mind of Christ up. Let me see what you can do with what I've given you. And you'll find yourself prospering in every area of your life. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. 
Now, uh, I'm gonna, what I want to do is I want to prophesy over many of you. I want to pray over some of you tonight. But let me share this with you too. I want you to learn how to prosper. I believe we're in the first of the year for a reason. Because the first of the year is when God wants to jumpstart you to a brand new you. A brand new life. Not a Holy Ghost goosebump. A brand new transformed by the renewing of your mind you. To where you're no longer just, you're, you're, not, you're not healed, you're whole. You're not just rich, you not have riches, you have wholeness. You have everything in life you ever need because God said, I've already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. So there's nothing new for you to get except reaching the Christ within and the treasure in your earth and vessel and grab a hold of it and say, that's mine. I'm beginning to put corresponding action behind my faith and go for it. And this is a year that you're going to prosper, take off, and explode. Amen? But you have got to put your hand to the plow and not look back and say, this time I'm going to make it work because I know who I am and I know what I possess in the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can we stand tonight? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You know, I have a, uh, uh, a financial course you get certified from. Uh, uh, we, have, we have like 15 CDs and a workbook and a book and everything on prosperity and what it really means, all this stuff. Some things in there we have that are funny. Some things are serious, but you will get blessed by it. I'd love maybe one day we can come back and maybe do a, maybe do a, a part one, part two, part three, because I want you to know what God has for you. Yeah. I do more than anything in my life. Amen. So let's just lift our hands for a moment. Father, we just release right now your voice, your voice in this atmosphere, Lord, to do what you need to do, Father. I bless you, Father. I say that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you, Lord, that we're, our minds are awakening to truth in the kingdom of God, Lord. We release right now your voice to speak to the people, Father, in this room. And to those right now... I, I, Let's pray right now for those watching on our broadcast. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release, Lord, a tangible anointing, Father, that would cause them to prosper and be in good health, even as they're so prosperous. Father, we release right now the miraculous signs, wonders, and miracles be it unto you according to your faith. So I thank you. We release them right now in the name of Jesus. Everyone that's listening, you're going to send in a testimony to this church of city churches. I believe God's going to do miracles in your life tonight. Amen. So, Lord, we release that. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Um, the lady right here, what's your name, ma'am? Cher. 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 Okay, I got it right good. Thank you. I was going to, if I could turn, turn my time. Here's what I heard in my spirit, Cher. I mean, can anybody just extend your hands towards Cher? Are you familiar with prophecy? Awesome. Amen. The Lord says, Share, God says, truly, God says, I have been stripping for years things in your life that didn't need to be there. I released you, God says, from the heavy burden. Now, God says, in this season, I'm giving you the heart's desire. I know the things you prayed for. God said that no eye has seen, no ear has heard. And it's your season, it's your time. I'm releasing to you, God says, those blessings that have been held up in the heavens. God said, you've, had to str you've been through struggles. You've been through warfare. You've sat here and you've said, Lord, when is my time? When is my time? God said, I needed to remove everything out of your life that did not need to be there. I even cut off relationships in your life. I cut off people that did not need to be there. God said for this time to release what needs to be there now. God said you look at things and you say were things of relationships dysfunctional? God says no. They were heavy weights to you and they did not need to be there. I'm releasing healthy whole relationships and this day says the Lord you will know your being, your identity in me says the Lord. Amen. Does that bless you Cheryl? Amen. Amen. And, and let me tell you something. Don't be afraid to cry or shout or scream because you know you know what I do when I get a word from the Lord man I'm just like yes you know so however you express it do it we're family amen thank you Lord okay are you ready Angie amen everybody extend their hands to Angie thank you Father what I heard in my spirit is when I saw it was both of you but you when I saw you with glasses it's as if it stuck out to me and the Lord kept on saying what the glasses represent is, is that strong perception of discernment I'm giving to her God said you have a sharpness of discernment to know people who needs to be and does not need to be God said I've given you that sword of discernment God said I'm sharpening that edge this, this evening I heard the Lord even say I'm, I'm giving you an eye to see and an ear to hear you literally have a seer anointing in you I felt it very strong of the day. You see things before they happen. You see and perceive even at the even when you have to go against the flow at times, you say, God do I do I give in? Is this you? Is this not you? God said, you know my voice. Press in. When others say no, press in because I know 
God says, the thoughts I have for you. And I want you to engage in those thoughts. I want you to engage, God says, in the things I say. Go for it, Angie. God says, and even this season, the whole financial thing that's going on, I hear the Lord say, it's been like this for you. It's been like, okay. But God says, you held on by faith. Your faith will see you through. And God said, right now, you feel like you're casting your nets out on the deep. God says, that's the best place you need to be right now. God said, hold on to the deep. God said, because you can't see the bottom of the deep. It gets darker and blacker, is it? does it not? When you get in the deep. But God said, hold on. Because when you can't see anything, God said, if you take, if you, if you have an eye to see, you'll notice I've already prepared a way for you of escape. God said, you, and I'm going to be, I'm going to tell you this because I love you. You've stuck in this at times when you said, I know I'm here, but mentally it's like, ah, uh, you know, it's like I, I, you have to fight through things. God said, you know I planted you here. You know I, it's a firm foundation. And God said, that stability in you is going to be, begin to be like a, a, a reflection to other people. And they're going to see the diligence in what you've done all of your life. Everything you've ever put your hand to, you've been diligent at. You've stuck with it like glue. You're not shifty. You're not flaky. You haven't been from here to there, you're, you're, you're fixed upon the master. God said, your ground is, is strong, but not only is your ground strong, it's now becoming to be wet. I see the dew of the heavens coming to wet your ground, and God says, well, you felt like it was it was dry, and I see you trying to plant seed, and it's like, it's not planting, it's not wet. God said, in this season, it's becoming wet, and the, and the seed is going for a ground, into the ground, and God said, it's going to start producing. Hallelujah. God said, in your season, to receive that, not just double portion, but the fullness of what I have for you. Amen. I even, here's what I heard the Lord say for all three of you. As the Lord even says, there's a, come on over here, brother. I the Lord say, there's, a, there's, there's two more avenues, two more vessels, two more roads. Yeah, get in the middle of these two wonderful, beautiful women. I see two more roads coming. God says, it's an entrepreneur anointing, but it's a strength of a business. Two more. And even though you're like, how can we handle what's going on? God said, you don't have to worry about him. God said, I've already raised up pillars. The problem is you don't have a lot of pillars. You don't have, you don't have people that will stand when the tough times come. But I'm raising them up to be here that will be fixed and firm and they won't move. And therefore you can move, but they're not going to move. That's awesome. Amen. God said, there's two more coming for all three of you. And there's sometimes you'll have to juggle. Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? But God said, I put you three together for more than you think. It's not about their friendship. It's not about working for Jeff Ferguson Ministries. It's a about a corporation coming forth. What I saw with the three of you, the moment I stepped in Friday night, I saw an umbrella canopy. And I sort of heard that old Rihanna song, Umbrella. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Anyway, but I saw that umbrella, and I literally saw as if the rains were coming, it was protecting this entrepreneurship business anointing. God said, God, I heard the Lord say, in 2014 is when the other river will be launched out and released. And it will be released, here's what the Lord told me, when you get another building for this house. Wow. God said, because I'm going to give you another building. And what I, I, I knew that before I stepped off this plane. God said, I'm going to give it to you. And God said, because right now, it's a place where you're having to take on more of a load than you need to. I'm lightening the load of that. There's too much, here's what I said, there's too much work being done for preparation. God said, you've already gone to the six day of preparation. You've already placed that six hour preparation hour. It's already done. It's already over with. Now enjoy the inheritance of the Lord. And I see prosperity coming for all three of you. And I heard the Lord say this. There's a connection for you. And I, I saw you as, as if you're going back to the south, not live. I'm talking about like, come and go, come and go. There's a connection of business for you that's, in, that's waiting for you in Texas. And for some reason, there's something that was not cut off, but it was as if sort of le, um, staying there with a question mark. And God says, the question mark is going to come forth and say, here, here's the answer. Grab a hold of it. I see you plugging into something that's going to extend all the way to Dallas. I don't know what that means exactly. But I heard the Lord say this. I don't even know how this functions or flows, okay? But our Lord say, there's, there's, there's new royalties coming out. The Lord, and I don't know if there's things you used to do that, that hasn't been paid for, but our Lord say, there's, there's new and there's old. There's blessings of old and blessings of new coming forth for new royalties. And you know a little bit about something God said, I'm going to give to you in about six months, what our Lord say. It's going to be new flows and new dimensions of royalties coming in. And God said, because I'm not going to have you doing what old Jeff Ferguson used to do. I'm going to have you sit back and cause it to come into you as opposed to you going out to it. It's going to come into you, is what I felt. And one thing I felt for you as well, as the Lord says, it's going to be a season for you. I, this is going to sound so funny. I saw you sitting there at night. I saw you pregnant. And God says, you're going to begin to birth and birth and birth. Don't you look around. <laughs> anyway, I won't, I won't. But I saw you, the Lord says, you are the birther of ministry. 
You, you have ideas that are coming to you within a year and a half that are going to be birth, birth, birth. I see new ideas and you're going to present it to him and he's going to say, go with it. I can see his face now. Go with it. Go with it. And I see you running with it and I see it. God says you have a special anointing to jumpstart things. God, here's what the Lord say. And do you mind me asking, are y'all you, about the same age? Are you, are you, who's a little older? She's a little older. Okay, I'll tell you why. Ooh, he, she just he just said our woman's name out loud. She's 28. He's 20. She's 25. <laughs> Here's what I heard because I love him. Just I saw as if sometimes you're you're gung ho, but sometimes you feel as if you're in her shadow a little bit. And God says you will always be working together, but pull out sometimes because you have you. There's anointing there that she's going to say, Oh my God, only you as my sister could produce it. God said you're going to see new inventions come out of you to do it this season. Does that make sense? Yeah. I felt that very, very strong. Um, and also, I don't know about anything about your really your dad from what y'all have told me or haven't told me, but here's what the Lord said. God says, rejuvenation, rejuvenation, rejuvenation. The strength come again. Um, and, I, and, I don't, and you haven't told me this part, but the Lord said, where he's very, almost like tired, I see strength coming back. It's like he's just really tired. And I saw, I saw strength coming back like a caffeine shot God's going to give him is what I felt in my spirit. And God God, and, and, and we haven't talked about certain things, but God said, a new heart I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him one that's going to be. I don't know if it flutters or anything, but I heard the word, I heard like thump, thump, thump. thump. I, heard, I heard on time, on time, oh on time. God. Does that make sense? That's what I heard. Okay. We haven't talked about that at all. Oh my God. We, we, we never even talked about that at all. But that's what I felt in my spirit. Um, I'm going to, I know we, I know I'm trying to get as many people as I can, but Mom, here's what the Lord says as a whale. God says, you have ran the race, you've run the course, you grabbed a hold. God says, and I'm not done with you, but there's some baton anointing in you. You need to pass down. The Lord says, it's not to them, it's to people in this church. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to raise other women up. God says, you're going to pass the baton to to say, let me tell you what I've learned in my life. And here, you need to run with it. I heard anointings of people that God says they're in your hand. You're going to say, oh, here, let me, let, let me, let me help you a little bit. I see you passing the baton sometimes. And I hear in my spirit as if you sometimes you say, oh, my God, where do I find the time? I mean, I've got so much responsibility. I've got so much because you're such a nurturer. Your heart is to care for not even your husband, your children, but for Jeff. I mean, you have, an, a, you have a nurturing heart that carries people. You don't just care, you carry people, is what I felt. And the Lord says that carrying mentality is going to be something, God says, that you always will bear to give to other people. I saw, God says, a nurturing you beginning to raise up other women in the body of Christ. Mothers in Israel, whatever you want to call them, I see that happening, producing. God says, take the anointing and give it away. You're raising up a young generation. You're going to teach them the ways of the Lord, the Lord says. Amen? Is what I felt. And I don't know, uh, can I just pray for you? Do you mind coming out here? Amen? I just fucking needed to, to touch you, you know? And I don't, I don't touch unless God tells me to touch, you know? Absolutely, sit down. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So let's have somebody stay. What was your name again? Michelle. Michelle. Isn't she beautiful? Amen. So if you want to just lift your hands, it's fine. Father, I just release right now in Michelle. Mm. I just lay right now, Father God. I, I see there's times there's cobwebs sometimes in your mind and you say you forget certain, certain little little things. I Lord say, I'm giving you clarity back to your mind. Your mind is overloaded, says the Lord. You've had problems sleeping, God said nighttime because you toss your turn. There's there's a there's a situation there where it's been difficult for you to think. God said, but this not to give you peace that will surpass your natural understanding. God said, Your thoughts have become my thoughts. Walk in my peace and sleep. God says, more than your eight hours. I'm gonna cause you to sleep with a good night healthy sleep. God says, give me your burdens. God says, you have it on you to take other people's loads because you love, you love, you love, but they're not yours to take. Give them to me, says the Lord. God says, and take upon me my yoke and my burden. Delight, says God. God said, I know your heart has been troubled. Your heart has been almost at a place of fear. You've been scared, the Lord showed me. You've been really scared and nervous. God says, for about a year. God says, daughter, I'm releasing that from you. I'm releasing that from you, and I'm restoring back your joy. God says, I'm removing that fear, and I give you faith, my daughter. Daughter. I give you the peace, says the Lord. This is your hour. God says, rest in me. Rest in me, says the Lord. So, Father, right now, we just pray right now. Lord, give her peace, Father, in the name of Jesus. Can I lay hands on your belly? Do you mind, Michelle? Amen. Father, just release those rivers right now. Release those rivers right now. You've got so much in you to give as a mother in the Spirit. Release them right now, Father. Release them right now to the body of Christ, her sons and daughters in the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love you. You become a new mom to me. Amen.
thank you, Lord. How long do we have? Real quick, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we have what we call popcorn words, you know, which we'll just get to the point. Amen. Um, what's your name again? Maddie. Maddie. Here's the Lord telling me. God said, um, oh, wow. Uh, I heard the Lord say, 10 years ago, I gave you some ideas. I heard the Lord say, you've got a teacher, Billy, Billy in you. I want you to come forth. I want you to start teaching. You've got it in you. Re go back in your past and redig those wells of salvation. Redig those wells of revival. you got it in you. You sit still for a while, but I'm refilling you, says the Lord, to get up there and do it. God says, you've looked around. You've said, where, where, where? God says, I put you where you need to be. Release it. Where you are, release it. Amen. God said you have my okay in the spirit and you have the okay in the natural from those I've connected you with. Amen. Does that, does that minister to you? Thank you, Lord. I don't know, uh, Blondie over here. What's your name, man? I, I feel the same way you do. I feel like I knew her. I was like, this is crazy. You got this really familiar voice. She looks like the actress that played in um, Austin Powers, that real pretty girl that uh, in real life. What's her name? You don't have to amount. It does. You have that beautiful... No. Get out of here. Anyway, you've got a beautiful place. Here's what the Lord said. Um, <laughs> remind me to hit you after a question. Anyway, the Lord begins to tell me this. God says, sometimes you sort of sit back and let other people sort of go with the flow. But the Lord say, step up to the plate. God said, I'm taking you from the back burner to the front burner. It's time for you to step up to the plate and do what I called you to do. The Lord says, sometimes you're sort of wondering... Do I need to do it? Is this really you, God? God said, you know my voice. Step into the power. I see you as if you're a plug being stuck into the wall. And when you do, you're going to get some great ideas. And, and I feel as if you've been a little confused. I don't know. Are you with anybody here? You know what I'm asking? Okay. With these people? With these guys? Okay. These are good guys. I don't know her. You must be a good girl. But here's the heart of my spirit. The Lord showed me. God says, uh, literally I saw you standing. When I saw you standing, God says, I'm going to rip out God says, some old uh, mindsets of, of those things of, can I do these? God says, I'm going to give you the cans and replace them for the cans. That's what I felt. I saw you beginning to rush forth. And, and something about you, you were popular in school. I'm going to talk about like, you know, the queen of them all. But it's like you had a popularity as if people just thought you were just, everybody knew you that you were just a sweet person. You were just really kind and gentle. And I saw the Lord says, I'm bringing that magnetism back to you because God says people need what you have. I see people coming to you and, 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 and asking you to pray for them. I mean, I see a, re a revolution coming out of you. Uh, something about you feels secure and people see that. God says, so grab a hold of that. That's why they're calling. I see your cell phone beginning to ring more of people saying, uh, do you have any ideas for me? And God's, God said, I'm going to supernaturally give you some ideas just to, get to give them. It's going to be right on the money. That's what I felt. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Um, thank you, Lord. God, we need more time, do we not? How, you know what that means? Pastor Jeff, I have no choice but to come back. I, you have to come back. Amen. Amen. I want to take up an offering because I'll tell you why. I myself positioned myself January 1st to literally change my life completely. I mean body, soul, and spirit. I mean what I plugged into myself to start juicing and try to eat right until I got here in Dallas. Thanks a lot, guys. But I found a program to start doing something naturally. And God says, I want you, I want every part of you to start giving away. Give yourself away and treat yourself with value and integrity. And I want tonight to take up an offering because I want you to have the opportunity to give to your Father in heaven. To watch Him pour out in you. Here's my, here's my thought. I'm not going to say, give Him more money, God. You know what? That's great and wonderful. We all need that. But you know what's more important to me that sustains money naturally and even spiritually in your life as prosper? It's creativity. Think about it. Donald Trump doesn't need more money. What he needs is he's stirring upon that creativity in his spirit. The, Benny Hinn didn't pull from money. He pulled from the anointing of creativity that caused something to produce that people needed. Are you with me? That's how Pastor Jeff's the same way with music. You pull from the level of creativity and your money will always be fine. Hello. Spiritually, Marvin, when Marvin steps to the plate, he pulls from the creative levels in him and releases out of his mouth a song of the Lord. He releases a, a, a fresh new sound of creativity. And you know what God says? I'm going to take care of you because you launched out on the waters of creativity. Creativity will always take care of you. Do you hear what I'm saying? So I want to pray tonight that you begin to give to the house of God. And what I want to do is I want you to stand after you do. And we're just going to release a level of creativity over you. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to begin to speak to these people, Lord, in the name of Jesus, of what they need to give. This is a fresh new year. This is the day the Lord has made. This is a brand new me. Save yourself for a moment. Just say, it's a brand new me. It's time I start thinking different. It's time I start giving different. It's time I start acting different. I've got to start acting like the man of God I am and the woman of God I am.
Amen. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you give seed to the sower. In Jesus' name. As you begin to give and sow seed, God will redefine you as the sower that He's always wanted you to be. Amen. Do you need all, if I need envelopes? Lift your hand. Go, Penny. Yes. We have debit cards as well. Make your checks out to City Church. If you have debit cards, you can write your, your number and your information on the, uh, the envelopes as well. And I want to tell you this. This really, I'm not saying this because I'm here and I'm the guest speaker and I'm Pastor Jeff's friend. This really is great ground to sow in. It's great ground to sow in. You can see the results through praise and worship. You can see the results in everything that goes on. Am I lying? Yeah, and you know that I tell people? This is so remarkable, Pastor Jeff. When you give to the kingdom of God, now hear this, hear me out. When you give to the kingdom of God, do you know that when you have a need and you don't feel real anointed and you don't feel as if I just need a fresh word from God, you're guaranteed to come to the Master's table and you'll always get a fresh word from the Lord. Always. But do you know if you don't give, the Bible says you're a thief and a robber and thieves and the robbers can't enter in, which means you won't be able to enter into anything in your life. Everything you touch will begin to fail. Because God says, you can't enter in. You're a thief and a robber. That's how serious God is with this thing. But when you open up the windows of heaven and say, God, here's my offering. He says, I'm going to open them back up for you. And pour upon you a blessing there's no room enough to even contain. I want to live in that overflow. Amen? So stand with your offering if you can. And just lift it up if you want to. You know. And once again, you know, this is about spirit. I'm talking about your ministry. I'm not talking about getting more money in your, in your checking account. That's wonderful. I'm talking about your life. Amen? We're talking about your life. Yes. Something kind of devastating happened in my life a little over a week ago. Besides just the norm. <laughs> but it was interesting because when I came in here tonight, of course, Dee keeps everybody on the up and up when it comes to the offering plate. If she doesn't say, Mom, you know, she'll do it. So, But it was really devastating in my life. But when I got here tonight, weird, God told me, count what you've got in your purse. I knew it wasn't much because I'm a change collector. <laughs> so Laura got the job because I'm working on my new eyes. <laughs> she counted my money in my purse, my little change. I said, okay, tell me what it is. But let me tell y'all something. Those are blessings. If that's all you have is what's in your purse, give your 10% if that's what you've got. God knows that's what you've got. And you know what? It won't be enough to buy a Sonic Route 44, which I don't drink anyway. Well, how are you sure where it was called? <laughs> <laughs> the Route 44 Queens over here. <laughs> but I'm just saying, y'all, you, you, you need to understand. And if God told me to count what's in my purse, you know what? Count what's in your pocket. What's a dime going to buy you? What's 50 cents going to buy you? When I was a kid, you could buy 10 pieces of bubble gum for a penny. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Those are the days. But Mother wouldn't let us chew it because she said it was nasty gum. They didn't make it under good conditions. <laughs> so I'm just saying, and I felt like I, God told me to tell y'all what he had me do. So Jeff was kind enough to let me pass that on because might be for somebody else too. Who doesn't have much, but they can take And I love you all very much, as you very know. <laughs> Amen. I'm just, what's a release? Is that cool? Amen. So every real quick, release your release your, your offering up real quick. Father, right now we release creativity. We release witty inventions. We say, let this be the year, God, of productivity, Father, because we're sowing seed, God, for the rest of our lives tonight. We're sowing seed, God, for the power of creativity to happen now. Everybody just say, right now, release my creativity. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. I love this church. Too. Sing, Lottie. Receive and wait on these people to bless them. You may be seated. Thank you so much for watching this web broadcast. 
of City Church of Dallas. God is doing so many things. It's blowing my mind. I thought we would be a local church, but we've become an international church through the internet. So what I want you to do, we have people in Iowa, people in Michigan, people all over this country that are sending in support. And because our church is bigger than this room that we're in, and you can feel the actual presence of God, and you are ministered to right over the internet. So if God should lay it on your heart, I want to encourage you to tie. If you don't have a home church, if you have a home church, tie there. If you don't, send your tithe in here to City Church of Dallas. Go to City Church of Dallas. This is how you spell it. Dot com. You can pay on PayPal there, a secure website, or you can send into the address or call in your gift. I promise you, lives are being changed through our prison ministry, nursing home ministry, our AIDS ministry. We feed the hungry, and God is really doing something special. But we're only a little bit more than a year old, so we need people to give. God bless you. I appreciate it with all of my heart.